Welcome to today's class. Today we are going to look at stamp duty. Stamp duty today has become um, the order of the day. In fact, it is said that stamp duty have shaped the tax law or tax environment in this 2020. Now you can see a backlog deductions of stamp duties by banks, especially that of um, state um, access bank, which they went further to um, um, deduct money from their customers and the customers complained and they reversed it and decided to pay with their money. Now, stamp duty is a duty on documents. Stamp duty is a duty on documents and Finance Act 2019 defined this document as written and unwritten documents. Now, stamp duty has an objective and that objective is to ensure that every document is stamped appropriately. Then the instruments that are chargeable under stamp duties are many. We have lease, we have bills of lading, we have contract notes, agreement, duplicate and counterparts, mortgage, market security, notary acts, receipts. This receipt is of importance. It includes both written and electronic receipts. You must have a stamp duty, insurance policy. Settlement, share warrant, warrant for good, appraisement, instrument of apprenticeship, bank notes, promise notes, and promissory notes and bills of exchange, conveyance of sales, other conveyance, letter of power of acne, capital of company. Now, this capital of company, this will be share capital of every registered company. So you must pay a certain percentage on your share capital. It's actually under ad valorem um, type of stamp duty. Now, Finance Act 2019 include the following electronic transfer of funds. So any transfer of funds you are making above 10,000 Naira will include stamp duty. You see, this will generate a lot of money for government because imagine in a day, People transfers numerous 10,000 10, and above, let's say more than 100 times, 15 times that. You see, give you a whole lot of money that government generates a day from stamp duty. So, in non distant time, stamp duty will be among the major source of revenue for government. Remember, the essence of government in putting up all this is to ensure that they have enough tax base to run the government instruments exempted from stamp duty act agreements agreements between federal and foreign countries instruments relating to reconstruction and amalgamation of companies sales of a company's properties under compulsory winding up finance act 2019 exempted the following Shares, stocks, and securities transferred by a lender to a borrower or its approved agent in furtherance of regulated security transactions. So, any stock you are buying, any security you are buying from the Nigerian Stock Exchange that is under the regulation of Niger uh, Security and Exchange Commission is exempted from stamp duty. Are you there? Now, shares, stock, and security returned by a lender. So, if the uh, if the lend if the borrower is returning it, if the borrower is returning such to the lender, it is also exempted. All documents relating to regulated security, lending transactions are carried out under regulations of security and exchange commissions are also exempted so you must note this the items that are exempted from stamp duty act so who are the relevant tax authority the FIRS what 
stamp duties will they collect? They will collect stamp duty between companies or companies and individuals. As long as such transactions or documents involve company and individual, FIRS will collect it. If it involves individual, individual, states, internal revenue services will collect it. Types of stamp duty. We now have fixed duty. Fixed duty. Fixed duty. Fixed duty. This is a duty that does not vary with the value of the consideration being stamped. So, a fixed duty are duties that has a flat rate against all the consideration of the transaction or document. You understand? It has a flat rate against all the consideration, you know, of the instrument. Example is payment receipt, bank notes, check leave, guarantor form, prosy form, notary public. Add valorem, add valorem duty, add valorem duty, add valorem duty. This is a duty that varies with the value of the consideration and is in accordance with the scale prescribed by the Act. For example, share capital. Now, uh, if you have a share capital of 100,000, the rate you pay will be different from the rate that somebody that has a share capital of 50 million will pay. So it is based on scale and it is graduating in nature. Mortgage and debenture loan, promissory notes, bill of exchange, property valuation. So they are graduating in nature so there are different rates for a different range of values so we now have implication of non-stamping an instrument the instrument shall not be given as an evidence the instrument shall not be given as an evidence the instrument shall not be admissible whether directly or indirectly now any instrument that is under stamp duty and you fail to stamp it, these are the implications. One, it shall not serve as an evidence. Two, it shall not be admissible for a secondary ed evidence. Three, it shall not be subjected to cross-examination. This one is actually done by those in court. Now, there are exemptions and they are a criminal proceeding. Once the case is a criminal proceeding, you don't need to stamp it. Whether you stamp it or not, the judge has the constitutional power to still attend it or administer it as a uh, as an evidence to prove fraud for example if the case is a fraud case the stamp the document don't need to be stamped for it to be cross-examined to prove an act of bankruptcy you don't need to stamp the document to prove that somebody has committed an act of bankruptcy. To refresh the memory of the witness, you don't need stamp. So these are the exemptions. There are others actually provided by the Stamp Duty Act, but master this. So we have Commissioner of Stamp Duty. A Commissioner of the Section 6 of Stamp Duty Act, CAPS X8 LFN 2008, provides for the appointment of a Commissioner of Stamp Duties by the Civil Service Commission. The Commissioner shall manage and oversee the activities of the stamp duties in Nigeria. And these are his functions. He is the administrative head of stamp duty. He has a duty of assessing the duties. He, he dies and stamps are under his custody. He expresses opinion. He expresses opinion he expresses opinion he expresses opinion on the amount to be paid on the stamp due on the stamp from time to time so these are the functions of the commissioner now stamp duty are rarely tested in terms of theory but it comes out plenty in terms of obj so read this up and answer questions your past questions so that we can know what we are talking about and look at um seeing you guys in the next class on transaction do have a nice day thank you